All right, your TA Serenity is in distress. She does not like 2D strain problems. Maybe that's something you two have in common, but that you don't have to be that scared of them. As long as you're not scared of triangles. So if you're trying to find the sheer strain at the four corners of this rectangle, right? Essentially what's happened here is you've got uh, an element, just a piece of metal. <laughs> All right, yeah, she wants to get the heck out of here. She wants nothing to do with this problem. But I'm telling you, it's not that bad. If you've got a piece of metal and it's being stretched a little bit and stretched kind of in these sort of four different directions, what you need to find is the new angle at each... <laughs> All right, Serenity, calm down. What you need to find is the new angle at each of these four corners. Originally, it's 90 degrees, right? It's just a regular box, regular rectangle. And after it becomes deformed, you might get different angles. So just find the new angle and sheer strain is pi over two minus the new angle. So you might have to do some trigonometry to find these angles, right? Sine or cosine or inverse tangents to find the new angles, but, but that's it. Just pi over two minus the new angle, done. So for point A, we're given 91.5 degrees for the new angle. So 90 minus 91.5 would be negative 1.5 degrees but strain has to be measured in radians. Strain is a unitless quantity. When talking linear, normal 1D strain, it's like inches per inch or millimeters per millimeter, right? So those units cancel out, it's unitless. So shear strain has to be in units of radians. Radian is that weird sort of unit that doesn't really exist either. It's a unitless unit also, even though it's like 60 degrees. So negative 1.5 times pi divided by 180, negative 0 0.0262 radians, or just the number itself, which is unitless. Again, radians are unitless, even though they're clearly a unit. Talk to a math professor, they could explain why. And the negative sign is correct because the angle has gotten bigger, right? When the angle increases, we call that negative strain. It's easy enough to remember because pi over two minus the new angle. So if the new angle has gotten bigger, it will be bigger than pi over two, you'll get a negative answer. All right, so let's look at point C next. You can see that there's definitely gonna be a triangle involved here. So 90 degrees minus theta C prime, the new angle at theta C. So I draw myself a triangle where the thing at C is the hypotenuse. So my horizontal base is a distance of 11 because I've got eight millimeters down at the bottom, but up at point B, point B has shifted over a little bit. It's shifted over by three. So my total new triangle that I'm drawing has a base of 11, eight plus three. My height, I can see the height over from the other side of the drawing, over at point D. I see there's 53 millimeters, which is drawn kind of at an angle, right? So that's not a vertical distance, it's along an angle. And 91.5 degrees, so 51, sine 91.5 is gonna be the vertical part of this triangle. Indiana, what are you meowing about? Indy. So back to the new triangle I've drawn, I'm gonna call the angle phi, this small angle on the inside, so that tangent of phi would be opposite over adjacent, would be 53 sine 91.5 over 11. So I make that an inverse tangent, find that this angle phi is 78.27, and I can subtract that from 180 to get my theta prime c 101.7 degrees. So I'll do my shear strain, 90 minus 101.7, get negative 11.7 degrees, but I have to convert that to radians. 
times pi divided by, one, by 180, uh, negative 0 0.2, would you call this radians or just box it unitless? So it's still negative, which is good because theta C is bigger than 90 degrees. So I should get a negative answer for shear strain. Oh, now you may be thinking, oh, we're only halfway through the problem. We still have to find the shear strain at uh, B and D, also the top two. However, we are given that B and D are, are horizontal. So the top line isn't bent at an angle, it's still totally flat. So what this means is that actually the angle at B is gonna be exactly the same as the angle down at C. And the angle at D is exactly the same as the angle down at A. So actually shear strain at D will be the same as the value we already found uh, at A and the shear strain at B be exactly the same as the value we already found at C. Had that not been at an angle, then we would have had to draw a few more triangles and done more inverse tangents and inverse sines or Pythagorean theorems to solve for those angles. But again, shear strain, just 90 minus the angle, draw some triangles, solve for the angle, no problem, easy day. And I hope you learned something from this video. If so, and you wanna do me a tiny little indie bitty favor, go ahead and hit the subscribe button. It's a stupid vanity metric. I know nobody cares about subs, but I still like seeing the number go up a little bit. Some good positive reinforcement for me. So I would appreciate it a ton. Have a great rest of your week, have a great weekend, and I hope you do awesome on your next test.